Last video, and then we uh we uh we on that sleeping dogs, and then after sleeping dogs, we on that Mortal Kombat. I'm so excited, bro. I can't wait to get back into Mortal Kombat. I mean, I can't wait to get into sleeping dogs either. But sorry, uh, uh, YouTube, YouTube. Oh my gosh, I literally been forgetting, bro. I've been forgetting. Yo, somebody just said it in chat, and I think they might be right. I think I might be allergic to the skin of apples. I think, uh, cause I don't know what it is. Like my gums be itching like crazy whenever I bite into an apple, but I can eat like the slices just fine. Type shit. No longer the magical one. Uh, running back, Patrick CC man. Patrick, how you been? Oh my God, YouTube. First of all, how y'all been? I didn't say this in any other videos. I forgot to even do introductions. I just kind of jumped into shit. Um, it's been like a week since I posted on here, but I mean, if you've been on the gaming channel, y'all, I've been, I've been motherfucking locked the fucking. But uh, but uh, uh I miss y'all. And I know y'all are probably thinking like, yo, uh, where's the reactions to like music and albums? And I know, bro, like I said, I've been locked into the gaming. I really did want to react to the Doja Cat album and the, the uh, 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 Tekka album, but I had to go. I had to, I was out of town. I was out of town for, uh, I was preparing, preparing to get out of town this weekend and then I was out of town uh, Monday through, you know, what it, what it is. So, you know, I'll figure it out soon, man. I'll figure it out. I might, I might check it out like sometime. Disney is no longer the magical, wonder-filled universe that it was when we were growing up. No! Not only have they been making uninspiring, lackluster new films- Wait, hold on, this movie was- No, 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 Outward? Outward? Whatever this fucking movie was called? This movie was fire. Films, but they have been going back saying. and changing old stories, altering the narratives. I don't know what they're doing here, and I hate that they're remaking- I hate that they remake films, and it's CG now. Onward was ass. Onward was asked to you because you already have your father. You wouldn't understand the struggle, bitch. ...of iconic creations. To make things even worse, they buy out competitive film studios who are actually making cinematic masterpieces and drag them into the mud. But the people have had enough with Disney's boring and bleak vision. That was an Onward? What was it? And for the future, they are losing hundreds of millions of dollars, bombing at the box office with record low sales, stock prices dropping to the lowest in decades, and while you think- Wait. That was an onward? Then what the fuck was it? Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what is this? Strange world. Strange planet. Wait, what? Someone said Coco? Onward. Hold on, I, I, I'm, I'm getting confused because all these, that, that's another thing with Disney movies. They're making their, all this shit look the same, bro. Um, onward, onward. Oh, these niggas was gnomes. These bitches was blue. What the fuck? There weren't even humans in this. Oh my God, I'm just getting confused. Tom Holland and Chris Pratt was in this. Oh. I didn't even know that when I saw the movie. This shit was fired. I, this was this was good. This movie was so good. I loved it. Um, I don't know what the fuck that other movie is then. So I'm gonna just assume that shit ass because Patrick CC said it is, and I'm a dick writer. I'm a Patrick CC dick writer. Ha! <laughs> Back and changing old stories, altering the narratives of iconic creations. To make things even worse, they buy out competitive film studios who are actually making cinematic masterpieces and make them worse and drag them into the mud. But the people have had enough with Disney's boring and bleak vision for the future. I've been talking about it, chat. I've been talking about it. They are losing hundreds I've of been millions saying of dollars, this shit. bombing at the box office with record low sales, stock prices dropping to the lowest in decades, and while you think this may be an indication they need to change, it is only going to get worse. The real reason Disney is refusing to pay attention to their imminent doom is much deeper and darker than you could ever imagine. Fade you are not just blinded by necessity. Chat, I can smell. Is much I can smell the VHS like like deeper and do you know what I'm saying? You could ever imagine. You are not like you can you can smell and just hear the sound of the of the box opening. Can 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 you not, bro? Can you, do y'all get what I'm saying when I say that? Oh my god, man, this was like the good shit. Like the good shit. Not just blinded by nostalgia. Disney was actually at its peak from 1989 to 1999. This was known as the Disney Renaissance. Where some we watched the video on this chat. 
Some of their best movies were created. The Little Mermaid, Beauty mm -hmm. and the Beast, mm -hmm. Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, mm -hmm. Hercules, Mulan, Tarzan. These eight classics all received an- And I'm only showing Demir. I'm only showing him these. He's not gonna see none of this new bullshit. None of that shit. Overwhelmingly positive critical reception, but more importantly, the fans loved it. Each film generated hundreds of millions of dollars in the box office. Yo, what should Demir's first rated R movie be? Like, it, like to really, like once, once he gets to that age, like what's the first rated R movie he's got it? Like I should show him. Deadpool. Mmm. The Lion King earned the rush hour. Well, rush hour is rated PG thirteen, so he'll he'll be seeing that like a lot earlier. The most at nearly one billion dollars, making it the fifty seventh most successful film of all time. These films were so successful that even their soundtracks were selling millions of copies. The Little Mermaid six times platinum, Beauty and the Beast three times platinum, Aladdin three times platinum. Ooh, John Wick. No, he's got to see John Wick. I gotta put him on to the Terminator, for show. Sure. They replacing the girl from Snow White? Kill Bill, gotta put him on a Kill Bill for sure. Wait, wait, why? Wait, are they really replacing the girl from Snow White? I didn't even really have a problem with her because I wasn't gonna see the movie to begin with. I just thought it was funny that how she was moving, <laughs> how people getting triggered by it. Uh, and I was about to say, there's no way they're doing that. I don't think they would, I don't think they would crumble like that, would they? They would just like double down. Pocahontas three times platinum. The Lion King reached diamond status. Now I did skip over possibly the most iconic animated film of the 90s, Toy Story. And that's because Disney did not actually create this film. In the 80s, Pixar was just an animation group making commercials as a step towards their ultimate goal of making an animated feature film. Mm. The studio made shorts to test their RenderMan software and produce animation challenges for the team. Tin Toy successfully garnered attention from Disney who wanted to expand the idea, making a film from the perspective of a toy. They developed a relationship Ew! where Disney agreed to distribute three films for Pixar, as well as provide connections and budget to land superstars Tom Hanks and Tim Allen as lead roles, but Pixar had never written a movie. Luckily, their co-founder, John Lasseter, had previously been an employee of Disney. Ew, look at Rex. Look at Slinky, what the fuck? Ew and worked on The Fox and the Hound, so John was tasked with writing Pixar's first film. He spent nearly two years working on the first version of Toy Story that depicted you Woody as a cynical a jerk. Toy. Who said your job was to think, Spring Wiener? Why? I just just use this would. vast reserve of brain power to consider this for a moment. If it wasn't for me, Andy wouldn't pay any attention to you at all. In fact, my stretchy friend, you would have been hauled away to Goodwill a long time ago, so shut your mouth and get them off the bed. When Pixar pitched this, Disney executives hated it. They thought the characters were mean-spirited and would send the wrong message to children. Uh, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Obviously, I think they were, he was supposed to have like an arc towards the end, but goddamn, that's a terrible introduction. So they shut down production of the film. Damn, they shut the whole thing, goddamn. Like, bro, that's a little fixer upper. We could, we could fix it. We could fix the shit up. God damn, we gotta shut down now. John was embarrassed and begged for another chance. I ain't gonna lie, I'd be embarrassed as fuck too. You go in there to pitch something, and instead of just getting denied, they shut your shit down. Disney gave him two weeks to develop another version. The second iteration of the film depicted a perspective of toys who desperately want to be played with because they love and care about their owners deeply. There Disney we go. greenlit the film, and luckily, it paid off. That's better. In 1995, Toy Story released and earned $373 million worldwide, Damn! becoming the second highest grossing film of 1990. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> Goldeneye. Pocahontas, Batman Forever, Apollo 13, 7, Casper. <gasps> oh my God, Casper. I love that movie. Waterworld, Jumanji, Babe. Oh my gosh, bro. Yeah, these are, these are fucking. 95, the first ever full-length computer-generated film, and a classic that shaped the childhoods of millions. Pixar and Disney followed that up with A Bug's Life and mm. Toy Story 2, adding to the catalog of amazing films. But it wasn't just Toy these Story animated so films that made Disney so iconic during the Renaissance. You also had The Mighty Ducks, Cool Runnings, Angels in the Outfield, The Jungle Book, oh Hocus Pocus, gosh. The Parent Trap, Oh heavy my gosh, I love this movie. Angels in the Outfield, The Jungle Book, Hocus Pocus, the parent. 
Chad, this movie literally had me think. Look, at, wait, hold on. Look at this goddamn. Look at this, like this cover art, bro. It's literally the exact same pictures. But back then, they literally had me thinking there was two of these girls. I really thought they was twins, bro. Trap heavyweights. Let me know some of your favorites. Uh, okay. So, well, we don't have to start. Uh, wait, chat. There was another. Uh, there was another one though. There was another one though with a, what, like literally with the Olsen twins. Chat. What was it called? It was like. It was like a. a, a wasn't it parent? Wasn't it Parent Trap? Was that a remake or was that like a original? What where, was 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 that one the remake? Hold on, Parent Trap. It takes two. Is that it? It takes two, baby. <gasps> oh my God! For every man who ever wanted to do right by his daughter. Daddy! Who is she? She's going to be your new mother. <gasps> for every woman. Chat, I would do that shit as a kid, bro. I thought that shit was so funny. I'd be like, <laughs> Yo! Whoever longed to become a mother. Drop the bat, let's go! Just let me smash this ball downtown! Warner Brothers has two perfect answers. <laughs> I see me too. I'm the woman of the house, and you're off to a year-round boarding school. <laughs> now a couple of identical strangers have decided to play matchmaker. All they gotta do is meet once, then they'll fall in love for sure. Wow! Somebody help me! Oh, you should look like a real jerk on a horse. You really should put some iodine on your butt. Cut. Guys like him like girls with food names. Cookie, muffin, they don't marry girls like me. But before they can get them to live happily ever after. We simply mustn't wait another day. To what? To be married. They'll have to ditch. The Bro, she was so fucking thirsty. Holy shit. We mustn't wait another day. To what? To be married. They'll have to ditch. The big bad witch. Ah! Gum in your hair? Yes. This tastes like a balloon. It smells nice. Nice. Warner Brothers Family Entertainment invites you to share some food. Goodbye! Oh, no. Not another horse. Yeah! And have some fun. Yes! Kirstie Allen, yeah! Steve Gutenberg, oh, and the Olsen twins, Mary Kate and Ashley. It takes two. Well, ladies, what do you have to say to yourselves? That was that was literally the ending of the movie. Oh my gosh, bro! Such a classic. It's so good, bro. It's also important to understand that during the '90s, Disney also owned two major production studios, Touchstone and Hollywood Pictures. Touchstone produced Armageddon, Pretty Woman, Dead Poet Society, Sister Act, while Hollywood Pictures produced Tombstone, The Sixth Sense, and a bunch of others I don't personally recognize. In short, Disney absolutely dominated The Sixth Sense and a bunch of others. The Super Mario Bros. S Santa Claus. Crimson Tide. I don't personally recognize. Jack. In short, Disney absolutely dominated the 90s. They created iconic moments of magic that taught us valuable life lessons. They taught us right and wrong. Never pretend to be something you are not. Listen to your parents. Love and cherish your family. Lessons that would make us well-rounded human beings. However, they did get their fair share of criticism back then as well. The Hunchback of Notre Dame explores themes such as lust, obsession, and religious hypocrisy, which are more mature and intense than typical Disney fare. The character of Esmeralda was critiqued for her sexualized design, objectifying and misrepresenting her character. The 1989 VHS cover of The Little Mermaid was banned and later changed when people noticed it contained phallic imagery. Oh but these God. days, many people think we should have been harsher on Disney films in the 90s, Why? which has caused people to go back in the past and become critical of what they thought were great films. What? And before we absolutely dismantle your favorite childhood films, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Underdog Fan- Wait, what?
Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Get in on the criticized sign up with my code Patrick CC to take advantage and win some money. Yeah. Aladdin as a whole was criticized for perpetuating negative stereotypes and presenting a distorted and one-dimensional view of the Arab world. They also thought that the casting of white actor Robin Williams to voice the genie, who is a mystical being living in a lamp, was considered whitewashing since the character had cultural connotations associated with the Middle East. Damn, kinda don't give a fuck. He he can that shit. Disney also went back and changed controversial lyrics in the song. When Lindsay started doing movies as an adult, my dumbass was like, whatever happened to her sister? Bro, I did the same thing. I, I literally had to, like, I think I think my mom had to tell me or something that she wasn't a real twin. It, that wasn't real. On Arabian Nights. A joke from the bloopers reel in Toy Story 2 raised so much controversy in 2019 that Disney decided to remove it. You know, I'm sure I could get you a part in Toy Story 3. I'm sorry, are we back? Oh, all right, girls. Lovely talking with you. Considering the sexual misconduct yeah. allegations against Disney executives, this joke didn't age well. Pocahontas yeah. was accused of appropriating and commodifying Native American culture for profit without showing proper respect or understanding of the cultures and traditions there was they were some Dumbo shit while too. also being too historically inaccurate. They also depicted a relationship that falsely represented how natives felt about European Robin settlers. Robin Williams will return in Disney's Once Upon a Studio as his final acting credit. Oh, I still didn't. I still haven't even seen that. That I was supposed to watch that. There was like a trailer or something. Uh, somebody who talked about that once upon. Oh fuck, I spelled it wrong. <gasps> Wait a minute, I just seen something. Welcome, 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 welcome to the family, Gen V. I hope you survive the experience. I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy it. We wanted to give you a nice, warm boys' welcome. Congratulations, you have your own show in the boys' universe. This is so exciting. Okay, here's some college advice for Gen V. First of all, don't schedule any morning classes. And don't drink anything if you didn't open it yourself. Behave yourselves. I'm not gonna be cleaning up all your messes. I'm sure it's gonna be a phenomenal season. You I can't wait to check it out. And just a little bit of advice for all the blood. As well. Oh wait, what? That I've seen in some of the teaser trailers, shampoo, shaving cream, and two showers. It's a two shower system. One piece of advice. Don't trust anything that comes from Vought. Always trust everything that comes from Vought, especially from my office. Good luck, Gen V. Break a leg. Not literally, because I know that that's a thing on the show. Get good grades, and then you can become part of the seven. And then maybe, you know, become CEO of Vought, but don't take my job. That's tomorrow! Okay, bet. Hold on, Patrick. Hold on one second, bud. Is that it? They all gone? Oh, boy! Come on, Minnie. This is it. Let's get the gang. Yahoo! Picture time, guys. <laughs> okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Damn, I know it's wet. Cause she came out of the water. Water. One hundred years this of stories. Trailer. Here's the link to the last trailer. Oh my god, bro! Shit, cause she came out the water, literally. Holy shit, y'all are so slow. Make it pink. Ooh, make it blue. One hundred years of magic. Ooh. Oh, help and bother. Do you think all the villains will show up? Not all. Celebrate 100 years of Disney with Disney's new original short film, Once Upon a Studio. World broadcast premiere October 15th, only on ABC. So be careful. So what the fuck is happening? Like, is that how the actual like movie's going to be? Or is it, I thought it was like, some behind the scenes of all their sh all the shit that they've done. Uh, and what was this? Hold on. Hot potato, the story of Wiggles. One. I never, I, I didn't watch the Wiggles, dude. I'm sorry, man. 
Wars. Their song Savages is a war song in the film with some questionable lyrics. Their whole disgusting race is like a curse. Their skin's a hellish red. They're only good when dead. They're different from us, which means they must be evil. People were angry that they made such an abhorrent song into a catchy tune. However, Defenders simply- Wait, but it's, it's so, so y'all were, so y'all are mad because the dude, hold on, what is this? Y'all are mad because this dude didn't properly represent how people treated them. And then when we get a song that really shows how like fucked up they are, it's doing too much. It's like, bro, make up your mind, man. Did a relationship that falsely represented how natives felt about European settlers. Their song Savages is a war song in the film with some questionable lyrics. Their whole disgusting race is like a curse. Their skin's a hellish red. They're only good when dead. They're different from us, which means they must be evil. People were angry that they made such an abhorrent song into a catchy tune. However, defenders simply say that this is an accurate way to depict how horrifying and absurd their mindset was. Yeah, he literally said they're different from us because their skin, like, is, or, or they're, because they're different. Like, how how dumb does that sound like oh my god i'm trying to justify like twitter shit this is literally twitter shit disney did go back and change some of the lyrics from their whole disgusting race is like a curse to here's what you get when the races are diverse however there is no argument that the renaissance era was disney's peak and the only reason they survived throughout the 2000s was because of their ability to buy the companies that were actually making great art mm. the 2000s is often described as disney's experimental era because the company started Dinosaur, love dinosaur. Lilo and Stitch, bu 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 banger. They're trying different ventures to Shaking keep their billion. And the music. My boy Phil Collins going crazy, bro. Ins flowing in. The Disney Channel was their venture into daytime television and was the last original creation before they kind of gave up. Even Stevens and Lizzie McGuire. Mm. Yo, she still be on Instagram going crazy were their first big successes in the live action sector, which led to huge hits like That's So Raven, Sweet Life of Zack and Banger. Cody, and on Banger. to be updated for modern audiences. Banger. Can't wait to see Bambi's mom get shot with an Uzi. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. <laughs> Damn, Disney! What happened? Hannah and Wizards of Waverly Place. These shows rooted our problems as tweens into reality. They depicted fun adventures while also tackling real problems like how to talk to your first crush, how to combat bullies, going through puberty, among other growing pains. Every single one of their successful TV shows were turned into movies which speaks to their experimental nature, but they also produced original TV movies like Smart House. Jump, jump, the house is jumping. Jump, jump, the house is jumping, jump, jump, the house is jumping. Hey, jump. Cadet jump. Kelly, the Halloween town. Oh my God, Halloween town. <laughs> Bro, I remember she, she had the deep ass butt chin, man. Holy shit series and of course high school musical for the people that didn't grow up during this era it's hard to describe how much the disney channel impacted children you wouldn't get it you just had to be there Kids in the 50s through the 70s pretty much only watched cartoons on Saturday mornings. 80s and 90s kids watched before school and after school, but had less variety and autonomy over what they were watching. Early 2000s kids grew up with multiple TVs in the house. If parents wanted to control the television, they likely had a playroom TV or bedroom TV where they could watch whatever they want. They had DVRs, playback software, endless amounts of reruns, and even multiple channels that aired the same shows. Disney Channel shows were averaging anywhere from 4 to 10 million viewers on the premieres alone. Damn. Hannah Montana and the Cheetah Girls became international superstars doing stadium tours. Bro, my fucking sisters was on their fucking dicks, bro. Was with 10,000 plus people singing songs that were based on a Disney Channel TV show. And while their live action TV thrived, their animated TV shows were much weaker than competitors Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. But they still had some solid new additions with The Proud Family, Kim Possible, and Proud Phineas and Ferb. Family. All what? of those also got their own TV <laughs> movies. But if it wasn't for Pixar, Disney's animated film presence would have tanked. They started the 2000s with The Emperor's New Groove, which fans love. Oh my god, I love this movie. This movie's like so fucking funny. Would have tanked. They started the 2000s with The Emperor's New Groove, hit, which hit. fans loved, but it failed to meet the financial success of the Renaissance era films, only profiting about $70 million, which isn't enough for Disney. You know, my From dead ass got hoed out first by like Disney. She got paid 15k for Hannah Montana, but she was making Disney millions from Hannah Montana. This is a small video of her schedule at 13, and I can see why she was going crazy during the 2000s. 
and tens. God damn, at 13? From here, hand-drawn animation was being considered obsolete, and Disney had not been working on computer-generated animation. To make things worse, there was new competition on the horizon, DreamWorks. Disney created a competitor to Pixar and DreamWorks called Secret Lab, but the films they produced failed to meet expectations. Dinosaur was their 2000 film that featured CGI prehistoric creatures. I like that movie, man! The movie was just alright, not impressive enough for their CGI debut. It secured over $300 million in the box office, but they expected more. Secret Lab closed down after one failure. Damn. Pixar exploded again with Monsters, Inc. Oh, damn. And DreamWorks came out of the gates hot with Chicken Run and Shrek. Oh! Shrek 2 secured $900 million in the box office. Disney was trembling. The Lilo Yo, they, oh my God, they were, oh my God, they were getting shit on. I really wonder what they were thinking. Yo, guys, we're fucking losing to a fucking big, big, big green ogre. What the fuck is happening, dude? Lilo and Stitch movie was the last original bona fide hit Disney had since the 90s, grossing $273 million, but it still didn't even come close to Pixar. Finding Nemo. Oh my god, wait, it all makes sense now why they're doing the shit that they're doing, chat. Like the more videos that I watch on it, they they just can't compete anymore. They literally can't compete. So they are literally just doing what already worked, bro. But just making it animated like or like cg animation and it's it's i mean it's selling but i don't think it's doing well i hope i i hope it's not, not to hate but i hope I it's not doing well because i don't want them to keep doing this actors contract came with a record deal it used to piss me off some were actually good too yeah no because they were trying to force every fucking disney uh actor to sing emo grossed nearly one billion dollars worldwide the incredibles 600 million dollars oh my god finding nemo the incredibles Monsters Inc. 500 million. How but it wasn't even just the money. Disney's animation was outdated, and their storylines were almost exactly the same from 1989 now into the 2000s. Talk they about knew it. they could not compete with the creativity of Pixar or DreamWorks, so CEO Bob Iger decided to acquire Pixar in 2006 for $7.4 billion. Every movie after 2006 by Pixar could technically be considered a Disney movie, but. Okay, so see, that, that makes sense now. Because I always thought, like, you always have the thought like, oh my God, those are Disney movies or Disney, but they weren't really at first. These niggas was getting shit on so bad. They had to buy the fucking company. God damn. Do you remember the dinosaur music score? Yes, bro. I cannot forget that fucking opening. John Lasseter at Pixar was not going to let them ruin his films. He demanded that Disney executives have little power over the creative direction of Pixar films. And since Disney needed Pixar, they obliged and saw even more success. Cars, Ratatouille, Wally, -E, Up, Pixar saved Disney but only for a little bit. Yes! To make matters worse for Disney, they were struggling to find big success in live action films. There was really only two films that carried this era, Pirates of the Caribbean, which became a multi-billion dollar series over the next two decades, and Chronicles of Narnia, which also grossed over a billion dollars worldwide. Even though that was technically a spinoff from a book series written in the 50s. Other than that, we got some cult classics like The Princess, Princess Diaries, Diaries, Freaky Friday, Freaky Bridge Friday. to Terabithia, Prince and Remember the Titans. Remember the However, as we went into the 2010s, Disney Channel Radio started to dwindle the only show yeah, see this is when like this is when uh i wasn't really watching the disney shows like this still gaining viewership was wizards of waverly place by that point kids like me were in high school and yeah same bro i was i was in high school and i was not listening to this the only re the only way I, the only reason i even knew about wizards of, of waverly place was because tyler the creator used it in a bar bro <laughs> Moving on from Disney, it seemed like every sector of their business was facing imminent disaster as we passed 2010. Their TV cartoons weren't as good as Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network, their animated films weren't as good as Pixar and DreamWorks, their live action TV- It was it's great. I mean, yeah, y'all are saying y'all are in- y'all were in elementary school, bro. <laughs> like, y'all- like, y'all were literally kids. Duh. That was- that was catered towards you. These shows were losing steam, and honestly, they never really had booming success with live action films aside from a few. Holes. So instead of buckling down, figuring out where they are going wrong, figuring out how to create wonderful imaginative universes like they did in the 90s. <laughs> Bro, I'm not coming at y'all. I'm just saying like y'all y'all saying how to how can I not know about this like y'all are completely shocked when I was I'm in fucking high school. I'm sorry, but if you're in high school now still watching like kid like those kid shows, it's like good for you but like niggas was doing shit and for nearly 100 years before they took the easy way out and just bought out companies who were actually making great art 
Disney actually has a long history of buying companies that are competing with them, mm. or buying into industries they want to take part in. Like in 1993, they purchased the Mighty Ducks hockey team and the California Angels baseball team. Why? Because they wanted to make a hockey movie and a baseball movie, and they weren't just going to waste an opportunity to create a money-making professional sports empire. Well, they failed, but the movies All were pretty good. All that Disney shit went out the window soon as I started getting bitches in high school. <laughs> a lot of people can't relate to that, though, dog. A lot of people can't relate to that. So it was like, you know. Then in 1996, they purchased ESPN as a whole when they acquired ABC Inc. And to save you a bunch of time, this is every single company that Disney owns today. Real God damn! C Inc. And to save you a bunch of time, this is every single company that National Geographics? Wait, this is so bad. Holy shit. Whenever, whenever, sh like, they're doing bad at something, they just buy something else that Disney owns today. Real estate companies, theme parks, merchandising, Vice, National Geographic, Hulu, and even GoPro. Hulu? Disney has wait they got two fucking apps then bro how you have a Hulu app that you own and then a Disney app that you are like that that is yours how does this work bro how does how, I, don't, don't, I don't get it they're literally ripping people off you are you have you have you own two different things and only put certain shit on either one Disney can literally make one app and then have everything on there ESPN too their white gloves in just about every business what? imaginable they were double dip that's triple dipping <laughs> wait that's triple dipping once a company that took pride in creating cinematic masterpieces to last decades with the help of bob Iger, they became focused on one thing and one thing only profit and in the start of the 2010s they did pretty dang good after they purchased marvel entertainment for 4.4 billion Many people thought Disney acquiring Marvel would remove some of the edge these Marvel characters had. Just like John Lasseter made sure Disney didn't ruin Pixar, Marvel's president Kevin Feige was going to continue to control the creative direction oh for future films. Oh my god, this films. is crazy, bro. Kevin produced most of the iconic Marvel movies in the early 2000s. Spider-Man 1, 2, Hold and 3. Hold on, hear me out. Disney is the Xbox of Hollywood. Why do you say that? Kevin produced most of the iconic Marvel movies in the early 2000s. Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Fantastic Four, Marvel was on fire, and Disney's newfound ownership would surprisingly make things better in the beginning. Feige had a vision for the Marvel Cinematic Universe that no one had attempted before on the big screen. His plan was to make an interconnected universe of films all building to one finale, Iron Man 2. See, we, we, we always need one person like this. We always need one person that thinks outside the box and then uh um succeeds at it and shows like wow this crazy thing can be done but we only need one we don't need all these fucking copycats bro we don't need all these people trying to make everything a universe now please let it go one man had a vision one man had a dream and he made that shit come true you're not that guy okay you're not him he's him and he did it Stop, please, bro. Fantastic I'm sick of four, it. Marvel. Everything's got to be fucking connected now. No, just make a movie. Just to make a fucking good movie, please. Was on fire, and Disney's newfound ownership would surprisingly make things better in the beginning. Feige had a vision for the Marvel Cinematic Universe that no one had attempted before on the big screen. His plan was to make an interconnected universe of films all building to one finale. Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America. They came out of the gates hot. The Avengers securing $1.5 billion God, dollars worldwide, which made it the third highest grossing film of all time in 20... When I'm playing MK1, we're, we're going to finish this video. We're going to get on Sleeping Dogs, and then we're going to do MK1. 12 Iron Man 3 Thor the Dark World That's why I started stream so early cuz I knew it was going to be fucking long World The Winter Soldier Guardians of the Galaxy Ant-Man Marvel was releasing two banger, huge banger, feature banger, films banger, per banger, year banger, banger, banger. Time, it was a cultural event <laughs> All the way up through 2019 they were breaking records left and right I watched all that shit went to the theater for every single one cuz they had us fucking hooked bro had us fucking hooked man Deadpool, Thor Ragnarok, ah! Deadpool 2, Venom, all were massive. 
then Black Panther, becoming the highest grossing film directed by a black filmmaker, yeah. grossing over $1.3 billion, Did the film celebrated shit. black hey, culture auntie. in a groundbreaking way, offering a vision of Africa through the fictional nation of Wakanda that was rich, advanced, and uncolonized. The film showcased a specific, beautiful black aesthetic, from Afrocentric natural hair to carefully designed costumes drawing from various African references. What you know about that, Patrick? I'm joking. Shit, I draw something. This attention to detail reflected the diversity of black culture and identity, but the two movies that wrapped up Marvel's decade-long dominance are Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Infinity War grossed two billion at the box office, making it the highest grossing superhero film of all time, only to and will be to be beaten by Endgame the next year, 2.7 billion dollars worldwide. It's just like every time we watch these types of videos talking about this stuff, and then it comes to this, the climax of it all of everything it just really makes me sit there and think that like damn that dude really did this he had this idea he had this idea and it it came to fruition not only that it was successful like the most successful thing ever and i saw it opening i saw it i saw it opening night and then the next night opening, the, the, the next Saturday night, and then Sunday. I saw I saw it like the, the, the whole weekend just to get that same energy with the crowd, Disney bro. Disney is what happens when any entity or organization gets too large. Yeah. It becomes a bureaucratic nightmare to get new creative ideas out. Think about it. How did OpenAI come out with ChatGPT first when Google had an AI lead on everyone? Too big to innovate. Mm. Bro, this AI shit is getting out of control, bro. Many people believe these two movies are in the top 10 best superhero films of all time. I mean, you know, type shit. They also believe them to be the end of Marvel's dominance. After all, I agree. it was Kevin Feige's vision to build all these stories throughout the years until they came together in Endgame. Pixar continued to steamroll ahead in the 2010s. Toy Story 3 became the highest grossing animated film of all time. Brave, which was a new story that became a massive hit earning half a billion in the box office. Mon I, know, I didn't see this, but I saw this one though. Monsters University grossed over 700 million. I ain't gonna lie, it, like, this was good. Inside Out was good. The the Monsters Inc. kid one was like, it was cute, but like, I don't even remember what the fuck happened. I haven't, I didn't see Brave. Uh, uh, but yeah, I saw Inside Out. Inside then Out. Inside, Out, Inside was Out was good. Even bigger at 850 million. Finding Dory was another billion dollar Finding box Dory, office cool. success. It was cool, it was cool. If you look at Pixar's catalog from 1995. Didn't, I didn't see the good dinosaur. Um, I, I feel like everybody remembers just seeing this cover for this movie. For, for this Cars movie. Um, yo, what up? ASAP Knock, uh, Finding Dory, Wally, -E, Ratatouille, um, Brave, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc., Cars 2. Damn, how many cars was there? Three? Up. Let's go start two bucks life. Five to 2017, they had one flop, one of the most impressive runs in history. Wait, what? from 1995 to 2017 they had one flop i remember for the i remember the trailer for this one too they, they were pushing this shit like crazy nobody see this shit though one of the most impressive runs in history disney was in total domination at the start of the 2010s yeah they were being carried by their acquisitions but they made a short comeback from their own animation studio wreck it ralph ah, in 2012 ralph. was a very pixar inspired film about the lives of video game characters inside the arcade machines earning a solid 500 million at the box office got the momentum building for what was about to come bro i feel like this is low-key the start of when like everybody was just trying to put like all these different characters in one thing like it was around that time when everybody was trying to put all these characters that everybody knows and loves into one thing to get all types of people in the theater frozen the highest grossing animated film of all time beating out toy story 3 1.28 billion dollars but the success of frozen was more than just money disney was able to recreate the magic and cultural dominance they had in the 90s an original princess movie with addicting musical performances valuable life lessons for kids like learning to be brave take risks communicate your conflict I, yeah, I agree i think the second one was was a lot better and always love your friends and family. It just felt right to see my little sister have an iconic Disney film to grow up with. Then they followed up with Big Hero 6 and Moana, both solid additions to the new Pixar-inspired Disney catalog. Mm -hmm. They also took a big step progressively. In 2014, on an episode of Good Luck Charlie, Disney displayed a same-sex couple for the first time. 
Taylor has two moms. <laughs> Something that would become a key part of all of their films years later. Their live action films, Cinderella and the Jungle Book, were also. There was a live action Cinderella? I remember the Jungle Book. I remember that shit. I, I never even seen the live action Cinderella. The only live action Cinderella I seen was the one with Brandy and Whitney Houston. Now that is the real live action Cinderella. Huge hits. Beauty and the Beast earned over $1 billion. I seen but Beauty and the Beast, but I had to support Emma Watson was in it. Everything was booming again. Disney just could not miss. In 2012, they purchased Lucasfilm, the creators of Star Wars, for $4 billion. Damn. Although this acquisition financially would be fruitful for Disney, there are a lot of mixed opinions regarding the execution of- I really wish we live in a world where Disney planned out this trilogy. In the rise of Skywalker's defense, I walked out of it still liking Star Wars. I walked out of Cats, not sure if I liked the vision. Yo, I remember, oh my god, I remember when the Cats was coming out, everybody was shit on that shit. Return of the Jedi, da, da, da. Of these films, their first release with Lucasfilm was in 2015. I like this one. When it when it came out, I liked it. But I think it's just because it's like, it was so long since there was a Star War, a new Star Wars movie and shit like that. It just had the whole, it just had the, you know, the, the charm, like the charm of like, oh my god, an adventure is beginning, but... Um, yeah, I, overall, I liked it. Star Wars The Force Awakens, which as it sits is the 11th highest grossing film of all time adjusted for Gone with the Wind? The fuck is Gone with the Wind? Hold on. Wait, this is the highest grossing movie of all time? 1939? 19... 30, wait, 1939, Gone with the Wind. Don't you want to marry me? I'm going to marry Melanie. But you can't, not if you care for me. Oh, my dear, why must you make me say things that will hurt you? How can I make you understand? You're so young and unthinking, you don't know what marriage means. I know I love you and I want to be your wife. You don't love Melanie. She's like me, Scarlett. She's part of my blood and we understand each other. But you love me. How could I help loving you? You who have all the passion for life that I lack. But that kind of love isn't enough to make a successful marriage for two people who are as different as we are. Why don't you say it, you coward? You're afraid to marry me. You'd rather live with that silly little fool who can't open a mouth except say yes, no, and raise a pastel of mealy mouth bread just like her. What? Okay, what the fuck did she just say? What the fuck? Yo, rap, you said it don't exist. Yo, you said like, yo, 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 but it's so normal. Yo, what? for inflation, earning $2 billion. What a huge fuck? success, but it didn't actually continue the Star Wars story that was developed for the past 40 years. So this is what y'all were watching. We're not about to disrespect Gone with the Wind starting the legend Clark Gable. I've been time. Lots of movies borrowed techniques from that movie. Just leave it alone lol it's old as shit now but back then this was Avengers Endgame or Avatar level techniques. <laughs> shit was ass man. <laughs> Fuck it's like they win. changed everything the fans knew and loved about their characters and wrote a new story. Visually, it was stunning, and people who were new to the franchise adored it, but longtime fans were disappointed, hoping the second film would be better. Rogue One in 2016 took a bit of a risk casting lesser known, or at the time not A-list actors, Felicity Jones and Diego Luna. Everybody only talks about that one scene in this movie. Disney executives were supposedly not fully satisfied with the first cut, and would bring in writer and director Tony Gilroy to help with the movie. With his help streamlining it all, reconceptualizing the story, reshooting scenes and editing, with the iconic Darth Vader fight scene being added right at the end of filming, the movie would be a huge hit. It was the last critically acclaimed and beloved Star Wars movie, despite having a billion dollar decrease in revenue from the previous one. Damn. Star Wars is a multi-generational I mean, well, that classic that is always going to bring in revenue due to it being the most popular film franchise franchise of all time. Yeah. Using revenue alone is not an accurate representation of how the community felt about these films. And there are people who dedicate their Well, bro, if people gonna stop, like, if people would stop seeing it, then, like, goddamn. The more y'all people see shit just because they got the name stamped on it, the more they gonna make it because they know the name alone is just gonna get your ass in the seats.
entire lives diving into the insane complexity that is this cinematic universe that George Lucas created. So to sit here and describe where every film went wrong would take forever. But there is some crucial information to understand why Disney tainted the Star Wars legacy. Disney CEO Bob Iger wrote in his 2019 memoir that George Lucas wrote outlines for a Star Wars trilogy. Bob said, we needed to buy them. Though we made it clear in the purchase agreement that we would not be contractually obligated to adhere to the plot lines he had laid out. Instead, Disney gave creative control to director J.J. Abrams, screenwriter Michael Arndt, and Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. From the very beginning, George Lucas saw them ruining his vision for the trilogy. He felt betrayed. Disney loved his ideas and bought him out only to change everything they loved. That's crazy. You gotta read the fine, fine print, dog. He just saw that, he just saw that bag and was like, but loved. And instead of them coming up with their own cohesive story, they let multiple directors take the leads for different films. Ryan Johnson for The Last Jedi and J.J. Abrams for The Rise of Skywalker. Critics say these films subvert our expectations, but that's just a fancy way of saying it's unpredictable. And just because it's unpredictable doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it's, it's good. good. The film's decisions regarding character arcs, plot twists, and the identity of certain characters felt totally random and lacked continuity. Yeah. Going against the man who created this franchise obviously pissed off longtime fans, and although each movie brought in serious profits, they felt like Disney took advantage of George Lucas and the massive Star Wars community. Financially speaking, throughout the 2010s, Disney reigned supreme with almost no dents in their armor. But the only way to go from here was down, starting with Pixar, the studio that saved them 20 years earlier. Uh -oh. John Lasseter, Pixar, and Walt Disney. I mean, he didn't have to sell it, but it, I mean, exactly. Like, dog, if, if it's really something you love so much and it's like your passion and your 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 child, why to have a price on it? <laughs> you know, why to why have a have a price on it? Come on, bro. You got a bag, bro. You, you got a bag. As fucked up as it is, yeah, they told you what it what they did they told you they loved it but business is business my guy business is business you gotta know somewhere they're gonna fuck you over bro chat let's say y'all build something from the ground up bro y'all build something from the ground up and people love it so much that they got fucking lores they got fucking games and all this shit about it and disney comes to you with a bag four billion dollars and you know in the back of your mind like they could really fuck this shit up and it could be bad would you sell it? I'm selling, yes. The bag was taken. Let's be honest. I, I feel like a majority of people, $4 billion comes to you. You're going to take it. You're going to take the $4 billion. Yeah, it's fucked up that they really fucked over his shit after saying to his face, oh my God, we actually love this. Yeah, go ahead, sign. I think... I think we might actually like go with that story. We, we might actually go with that story. Signs the paper. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start this shit off. Okay. So w we should cast the main character. Uh, where should we start looking for this guy? Guy? No, 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 no. Uh, we're gonna make it a girl, and let's find a black dude too. Wait, but wait. This this is not in his. This wasn't in his. You really think I'm about to listen to his shit? You really think I give a fuck what he said, bro? No. We need what the we need what the people want. A woman and a black man. Find him. ASAP. The animation studio's chief creative officer took a leave of absence in 2017 after revelations last year that he's gonna lie, four billion. But this is this is the thing. If you really love something and that's your baby, that's your baby, I'm not gonna lie. You keep that and you can literally make that four billion just with good ideas. Like, if you really wanted to bring that shit back, spin the block on a new trilogy. You should hear Bob Iger talk about buying Lucasfilm. He snaked George. He talked up how Disney has been established for almost 100 years and would keep Lucasfilm alive for generations to come while maintaining his vision. Lamau Disney the real mob. They really finessed his ass, bro. With empty promises, bro. We have been established for almost a hundred years and would keep Lucasfilm alive for generations to come while also maintaining your vision, man. You just sign those don't dotted nigga, I don't take, oh. You just sign those dotted lines and I tell you, you sit back and enjoy your creation, grow, and you know, you, you don't gotta worry about nothing else, man. And then they just shit on this guy. God damn. I mean, but like 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 we said, he didn't have to sell it, so it's like you can't really, like, you can feel bad for him. Like, damn, that shit kind of fucked up. But, like, 
At the same time, you didn't have to sell it. He sexually harassed multiple employees during his tenure. I'm sorry, huh? And Walt Disney Animation Studios' chief creative officer took a leave of absence in 2017 after revelations last year that he sexually harassed multiple employees during his tenure. At Pixar, John was known for grabbing, kissing, making comments about physical attributes. John responded with, I've recently had a number of difficult conversations that have been very painful for me. It's never easy to face your missteps, but it's the only way to learn from them. Lasseter made himself the victim. They said you, you were grabbing and kissing people and talking about their bodies. That's not a misstep, my guy. You were literally like sprinting. Hoping to gain sympathy of those who oppose this sudden Me Too movement. Disney didn't fire him until he finished the projects that he was working on. He stayed there for another year to finish Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4. Both were massive commercial and critical successes. Although John was exposed for being a relentless creep, deserving of his term. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that's the shit that's so funny about like, cause I hate people. I, I can't stand people who be like, um, they're gonna boy they're gonna boycott a certain thing that everybody like might use or like like what what's the what's the alcohol bro um it was an alcohol company that i guess they had like two gay guys kissing or some shit like that it was like a beer commercial or some some type of shit and everybody was like we're not doing we're not drinking that gay shit da 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 but like yeah people wanted to cancel bud light because of some like some random thing bro and it's like if this is what you really feel about certain things there's so many things that have been made that Someone made it that you don't like, like the pen you use, the pencil you use, the chair you shit on, sit on, the controller you play with. There's some racist dude who probably made the controller you use, but because you don't know about it, like you, you don't know about it, you're still going to use it. But you hear, you know about this one. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird to me how people try to cancel things that multiple people have worked on it. It's not just one person. It's just goofy shit to me. So it's like. People have seen this movie and don't even probably don't even still know about the story, the, the story, bro, but st still stand behind other things uh, that they don't like or try to come at other people. How can you support this person? Do you know that this person did that? My nigga, did you take your kids to see Incredibles 2? Yeah, but what does that have to do with? Do you know what happened? Do you know what the guy did? Well, I didn't know that at the time. Well, you're disgusting and you're sick and you should have done your research. Who the fuck is going to research every single thing they, that they buy? Who's going to research every single thing that they play or every single song that they listen to? Duh, it's so annoying, bro. Chat. The only reason why like it's annoying to me is because there are there will be people but whenever I, if I react to a song, if I react to a movie trailer, if I react to if I play a game, da da da. It's like you know that uh, a, a voice actor da 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 did this on this. I'm like, bro, like, like I'm playing a fight. I'm playing a fucking game. Like what what you want me to do, bro? Like damn. Shut up! And critical successes. Although John was exposed for being a relentless creep, deserving of his termination, there is no doubt that he was the creative genius at Pixar. After he left, Pixar died. Onward was a box office flop and received controversy for this clip. It's not easy being a new parent. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out, okay? The officer mentions- What? Wait, are you serious? I just talked about at the beginning of, the, of this, how I really like this chat. Oh my god, I didn't even remember this part. I didn't even re remember this part. Why are people so obsessed with like gay people? Like, holy shit, it's it, like, what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> this shit's giving me a headache, man. I feel like people who are so obsessed with this are low key, like, are like probably on some shit, bro. <laughs> I feel like they low key are on some shit. I ain't gonna lie. Kids? But it's like, even kids are not gonna sit down and die, die, uh, dissect that, li that line that she gave. Onward was a box office flop and received controversy for this clip. It's not easy being a new parent. My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out, okay? The officer mentions her girlfriend's daughter, obviously stating that she is a lesbian. Most people didn't even notice this quick line. That's what I'm saying, bruh. Like, damn. Y'all wasn't looking at her face? Look how big her damn nose is. Like, that's the shit that's confusing me. Why the fuck is her nose bigger than her eyes? And why she got one eye? And why her eyebrows fucking snatched? Goddamn, bitch. In fact, the LGBTQ community was pretty happy about it. However, this short scene got the film banned in multiple Middle Eastern countries. From there... And that's another thing. I'm like... I don't got a problem with... I don't got a problem with the gay community or any, any community. I don't give a fuck. But I hate when people be like making shit bigger than it really is both ways. Shut the fuck up, all right? If that little line... And if you post that shit and put on... 
on Twitter like, we need more of this. We need a main character, da da da. I feel like more characters should be less straight white men and more gay, da da da. It's like, yo, okay, now see, shut the fuck up. You're doing too much. Shut your bitch ass up. Okay, it's the same way for anything else, bro. It's the same thing for anything else. If there was a if there was a scene in a goddamn uh, uh, Avengers movie, and uh, Falcon was like, Falcon was like, uh, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm not gonna go to, I'm not gonna go to fucking Instagram or um, Twitter and be like, we need more of this. Fuck Captain America. We need more black uh, uh, prominent actors doing. It's like, dog, yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck. First of all, you should not be hyping up Falcon ass, my nigga. <laughs> you act like that was Black Panther that said that, my nigga. Sit your ass down. It's the fucking Falcon. <laughs> that nigga said that line and then flew away or some shit, man. Soul was a flop. Hit Luca was a flop. Like, what did she say? Right? Like, I, there's no way someone was in the theaters like, hey, hey, she's a lesbian. Oh, I'm out of here. Come on. Come on. Pack it up. Flop. Turning red managed to barely. I, I thought Luca was cool. People didn't even notice this quick line. In fact, the LGBTQ community was pretty happy about it. However, this short scene got the film banned in multiple Middle Eastern countries. That's crazy. From there, Soul was a flop. Soul? Okay. I like, I did like Soul. Soul was good. Luca was a flop. Turn I liked Luca too. I, and I watched that shit randomly. I didn't even like, had in, I had no interest in it. It was cool though. Turning Red managed to barely make a profit, but when you consider how Soul's a flop, I mean, like, a movie can be good, like, it could be good, but still be, it could still be like a flop. Like that shit just won't, sometimes it just don't be selling well, you know? Soul was fire, but shit be flopping, bro. Didn't that go to straight to streaming too? I don't think that was in theaters. Their marketing expenses, it's still a flop. Pixar was spending 100 to $200 million per film to make these detailed, beautiful universes, but lacked any decent storytelling to keep. Ah, uh, COVID, COVID. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably a big reason why too. Keep you engaged. Lightyear was the unforeseen spinoff of Toy Story. Fucking trash, I don't, oh, fucking trash, dog shit. What the fuck were they thinking? I'm glad that shit blew dick. Stories Buzz Lightyear. And in this one, Pixar took their inclusion to new heights when they displayed a same-sex couple kissing. Imagine going out bad in a trash ass movie, bro. Like, holy shit. You bought that shit to a trash ass movie just for people to shit on it even more. Conservatives claimed Lightyear was an attempt by Disney to indoctrinate children and shape their beliefs. Social what? media saw a firestorm of different opinions online, Wait, what? and the movie failed in the box office. But Wait, what? Like, bro, the movie was bad because that's just not Buzz Lightyear. Like, that wasn't our Buzz Lightyear. Like, who, the, like, what, what? We talking about Buzz Lightyear? Bro, the movie, the, the reason this the shit sucked is because of Buzz Lightyear. What the fuck? I don't give a fuck about that scene. <laughs> bro, what? No, I don't stand with that. But not just because of controversy it's because they depicted buzz okay i was about to say god damn bro i thought the whole consistency of why people didn't like this movie was because of this nigga <laughs> as more of a human than the toy we all know and love it was voiced by not tim <gasps> oh shit no there's a reason why he ain't talk about this shit y'all remember that video we watched on his film breakdowns there's a reason why that shit wasn't up here you want to stay far away from that shit. Didn't you do an animated film? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm Alan, and it's an origin story that nobody really needed in the first place. It's hard to say what exactly went wrong at Pixar in the past few years. It can't simply be Lasseter's exit because- Chris Pratt, worst voice actor. Bro, that, bro, that's Chris Evans, first of all. Why did Chris Pratt just catch a tray? Leave that nigga alone. He was hired by Skydance Animations, and their first movie, Luck, was a commercial and critical failure. I've never even heard of that shit. Pixar has never had so many failures commercially and critically in their entire history. They are on life support and don't know how to save themselves. The next sector of Disney's business to go was their own animation studio. Instead of taking risks on new storylines, they continued pushing what was working. Ralph Breaks the Internet was a solid sequel that was loved by fans and critics, also turned a decent profit. Frozen 2 was bound to be a smash hit and ended up being bigger than they probably imagined. It was better, it was better than the, than the, the, sec the first one. $1.4 billion in the box office the second highest grossing animated film of all time. Hopefully this was enough profit to handle all the loss they were about to take in the 2020s. That was the second, the second highest animated film? God damn. Oh my God, Lion King, 2019 version. So fucking disrespectful, bro. 
film of all time. Hopefully this was enough profit to handle all the loss they were about to take in the 2020s. Raya and the Last Dragon. Flop. Inc what? Damn, that's a fire cover art, but... Who... Who is Raya? To handle all the loss they were about to take in the 2020s. Raya and the Last Dragon. This... This looked like it, it was, it's just too much going on. Again, flop. Encanto had an okay box office performance, but got more popular once it was added to the Disney Plus streaming service. Mm. Strange World was that's, a that's when I seen it. massive box office failure. This is what we saw at the start. Ew. Who the fuck is this in the front? And had yet another LGBTQ controversy. Oh. The main character, Ethan Clade, is an openly gay teenager whose crush is the male character, Diazzo. This is the first Disney film with an openly gay lead character. Teachers in Florida were being investigated for showing- Oh, yeah. That's why that shit- that's why that shit, uh, didn't hit, huh? This is the thing. I don't even know, like, I don't even know, bro. I really don't know, man. Knowing this film because how do you how do you put characters like that in movies without making it seem forced because a lot of this shit before like some shit be forced but some shit it's like how do you go about doing that because i also don't want them to start like i, I don't know i don't know how to you know how do you differentiate film to their students opposers you got to remember religious beliefs true there, I, yeah, there are people who are religious who just can't take <laughs> two people of the same sex kissing. No, no, not my God. Dog, relax, bro. <laughs> like, damn, bro. You, I, like, honestly, you're scaring your child. You're scaring your child, bro. You're scaring your child. Imagine being in school because you've raised it and, and you've raised a kid that like sees how you react to things like that. And they see two dudes holding hands. Hey, no, not our God. Right, guys? And everybody's just looking at that, looking at you, looking at your child like he's the weirdo. Like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Dog, it is 2020. Dog, it's 2030, bro. Like, are you good, bro? Just think that Disney Animations is failing because they choose not to write an interesting and meaningful storyline, but rather focus on pushing an agenda to children. However, the LGBTQ community feels like they're finally getting deserved representation in films. But Disney made their stance towards the LGB. That's another thing I hate, bro. It's like, oh my god, I don't know, bro. I I, I don't know, man. TQ community very clear in March of 2022 when Florida legislator passed HB. Most people were raised on old beliefs. Oh, trust me, I know. That don't make it right. And what does that got to do with anything, bro? Trust me, I know, I know. But at the same time, it ain't that deep. Why does how you were raised and the God that you believe in have to do with what another human being is doing that you don't even know? You have no, you have no idea who this other human was, who, who, who this other human is. What you need to do is mind your own fucking business, pray to your own God, talk to him and get off other people's dick, which you're looking ass. 1557, otherwise known as the Don't Say Gay Bill. This what? bill prohibits instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity in grades kindergarten through third grade. The bill is framed around the fundamental rights of parents to make decisions regarding the upbringing and control of their children. Since Disney World is located in Florida, they were pressured to take a stance. They issued a statement. Florida's HB 1557 should have never been passed and should never have been signed into law. Our goal as a company is for this law to be repealed by the legislator or struck down in the courts, and we remain committed to supporting the national and state organizations working to achieve that. Disney did not attempt to block this law while it was in process, and as far as we know, have not made any progress towards getting it changed. Walt Disney Studios was able to offset some of the losses from their two animation studios failing with live-action remakes of classics. From 2015, Disney has been on a remake tirade. Cinderella, The Jungle Book, Alice Through the Looking Glass, Beauty and the Beast, Dumbo, Aladdin, Lady and the Tramp. All of these were very safe and solid box office successes, but the biggest was none other than The Lion King, earning $1.6 billion, making it the highest grossing animated- Bro, and that's only because of the, the fucking- it, it had nothing to do with how the movie looked. It had nothing to do with the story or, or anything. People were just raving about the voice actors, bro. People were all- they were talking about the voice actors. That was it.
film of all time. However, these safe remakes- They slapped so many damn names in- They slapped so many damn names in that movie. It's like, bro, you, you had to see it. You had to see it. You mean to tell me Beyonce and, 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 and uh, Seth Rogen and all these different people are- I gotta see the dynamic. And plus, it's The Lion King. Makes would come to a screeching halt. Mulan, Cruella, ass. Pinocchio, Peter Pan, all failed to all make ass, substantial all ass, revenue. All ass. Now this could be due to the pandemic shutting down theaters and people being scared to go out in public, but it's more likely that Disney fans are just exhausted from the oversaturation of old stories. Yeah, Donald Glover so was in it too. at a classic. The Childish, Little Childish Gambino was in that shit. I saw The Little Mermaid. Definitely get why people wasn't fucking with it because that damn seagull or whatever the fuck she was. I, I thought she was funny though. Bow, chicka, wow, chicka, wow, wow. Overall, like the mo the movie is just, bro, it's literally just, it's just the same movie with just different actors and actresses and it's live action. Like, I don't know why people go see these movies. Disney fans are just exhausted from the oversaturation of old stories. I mean, I know why, but so they threw a curveball at a classic. If you if you go see a cl if you go see a classic Disney movie, but the re the re rammed version, and you come out mad, you have no one to blame but yourself because you should have known. You, you should have fucking known. Little Mermaid 2023 was a live action remake that casted Halle Bailey as Ariel. This made headlines because the original 1989 animation depicted Ariel as a white woman, whereas Halle is African American. Disney has been accused of whitewashing their characters for years. This is, this is another thing though. This is another thing though. There is no yes, finally, we needed this just because there was a black Little Mermaid, bro. No. Those moments can't happen because they just recolored an old skin. Make new IPs. Make a new IP with a the black character. That's when we get like, oh shit, wait, it's a new, it's a, it's a new Disney princess, and she black. What? Hold on, let me let me check out the trailer. It's just not like, yo, the Little Mermaid's dropping. What? Little Mermaid? Yeah, she's black. What? You see how I don't hit the same, bro? That that shit don't hit the same. What you mean a black Little Mermaid? Well, I gotta see this trailer, I guess. <laughs> But we don't often see them totally change the race of one of their main characters. Critics accuse Disney of blatantly pandering, trying to change something that was a non-issue in the first place. I agree. Place. However, defenders pointed out that mermaids don't have a race because they are not real, and Disney has. So then, why, so so then, why change it? Then that's the that's the question. Why change it? Because they're pandering. You you already lose your own argument something that was a non-issue in the first place. However, defenders pointed out that mermaids don't have a race because they are not real, and Disney has had very few black lead characters over the years. So, so changing the color of, of an old classic because they didn't have old black princesses makes it better? No, make a new character. Just cause you change the skin, just cause you mod the original fucking Little Mermaid, does not mean it's a new thing and that we should all rejoice. Yo, yo, African-Americans, look what we did. We changed it. There's a new mod where you can watch it, live action, and she's black. And we got a seagull that talks now. Or whatever the fucking bird is. I don't think it's a seagull, but pelican? No, I don't know. Some people in the middle thought that the lead just didn't look like Ariel, specifically because her hair is orange and not red. Normally, these controversies lead to failure. Okay, the hair, like, hair, really? Come on. <laughs> the hair thing is crazy. Come on, look at her skin. All right, let's let's get mad about that, can't we? But fans and critics seem Stay to like topic. this movie, and it made a nice profit. However, their upcoming Snow White remake has- Uh-oh! SpaghettiOs! God damn! Don't I? Thank you for being so strong and correct. I, what? It takes someone like you to actually call this shit out, which is a blatant violation by the media companies. Not the people, not the audience. Nobody cares, but the corporations push this for some reason. Bro, I just say how I feel. I'm not saying that I'm right about anything. I don't think I'm right about anything. I think I'm right about what I feel. I'm not saying I'm right about how everybody else should feel. I'm just, I feel like I'm right about how I feel because I mean, that's how I feel. Um, and I've just never cared about how other people feel about what I think. Like, it is what it is. Like, just if you don't like what somebody says, stop watching them. It's the same thing with movies. If you don't like how something's going, stop watching it. That's the same reason why, that, like, that's one of the reasons why I, I'm not forcing myself to watch, like, shows or new, uh, superhero movies that come out. Because if I know our, how I already feel about it, 
Why would I go get annoyed knowing that I'm already going in there annoyed because I already, how I already feel about superhero movies. So if I see it and I don't like it, I'm just going to come out even more annoyed. Or even if I do like it, I'm going to sit through it not knowing that I'm not going to like it or probably not like it. And then just ruin the like it's just going in. It's like those people who just go like on Instagram, see a post that they don't like, read the comments and then leave a comment because they're so mad. So it's like dog you could have literally scrolled past it's not that deep i never understood people like that so yeah hey it's it literally hate watching people say they hate streamers but literally sit there and just watch them watch them and just talk shit or they turn on their notice just so they could be like l stream i could never live like that which is probably why i'm in the position i'm in because i don't just sit around doing stupid shit that is a waste of time like that this movie however why does this look like an ai uh made the made the cover art I ain't gonna lie. The way they treating Snow White, they might as well have made, made her like they they might as well change the 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 color on her. Wait, isn't she Mexican though? Is she? No, she white, right? It's so crazy because it's like, bro, <laughs> this movie is so down. Oh my god, wait. Oh my god. Oh oh, she's mixed. Oh shit. Oh damn. Oh wow, they okay. So they Disney don't give a fuck. They bought everything. Why would I guess why would they care about what they doing in their movies? They could just make money somewhere else, I guess. I don't this is crazy. It's easily received the most controversy out Personally, of them all. As a white guy, the rest of this comment was blocked due to moderation. I'm just kidding, YouTube, shut up. What the fuck does that mean? It hasn't even come out yet. It all started with the casting of Rachel Zegler, a Colombian American set to play the role of Snow White. This specific princess is known for having pale white skin and dark hair, but Rachel's skin color is not why people are angry. It's her constant reminders that she hates the original story. And her skin color. Let's talk about it. I mean, you know, the, the original cartoon came out in 1937 yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's Snow White, bro. Come on. Yeah, I, I'm not even white and I'm I'm actually furious. Like that's just disrespectful. <laughs> I'm not even white and you just disrespected me at this point. Like Snow White, excuse me. <laughs> um there is a big focus on her love story um with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm laughing so like you laugh too and like what I said was right cuz I laughed, right? Like dog. Oh my god. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. It's like I get where she coming from, all right? Because it's a whole new year, chat. It is a whole new year. The times have changed. She was probably one of those people who were like, yo, oh my gosh, I'm kind of sick. I'm kind of sick of all these movies where the woman is un and incapable of handling herself and she always needs a dude, you know, she always needs a dude's help. It's, it's just annoying. I get that because that's probably annoying as a woman for her to keep seeing as someone who probably loves movies. But... This wouldn't be a problem if this was a whole different movie you were making where the girl don't need no nigga. And it, it, this ain't the 1930s. And she's going to show you this in this film coming soon. We'd be like, oh, all right. I mean, I get that. I, I understand that. But that's not what this is, Ziggler. This is Snow White. Y'all are remaking a film where the whole basis of the movie is based upon that. So what the fuck is you talking about when you be like, this ain't the 1930s, we doing shit different? Make a different movie. This is the shit that pisses me off, bro. Y'all can't take these movies, change it up, and then name it the same movie, bro. fucking idiot will watch a movie where seven dwarfs are played by seven pricks who are all from different backgrounds but end up together to ask lick a mix raced Snow White because she's a powerful bad bitch and doesn't need a prince to save her. The crazy thing is, the actual Snow White character wasn't some helpless princess. Focus on her loves. Well, we not we talking about the we're talking about the movies because that's another thing. People always try to use the shit that came before. We are talking about the movie, bro. Who give a fuck about the? It's the, it's the same when uh when they were talking about the Little Mermaid. Well, actually. And uh, the Little Mermaid past shit. Why not? Because nobody's... Y'all only bringing it up so that you can fucking have your movie and be fine with it. No, nobody wants that shit, bro. Nobody wanted a Black Little Mermaid. They made a Black Little Mermaid. I hate the people who bring up the... the, the uh, 
the Black Little Mermaid be like, it's fine to have Black Little Mermaid. The original Little Mermaid was like green or some shit. Who the fuck are you? Who, what book is that? None of us read that shit. You only using that shit now because you saw it on some Twitter thread or some fucking Instagram uh, thread or some shit, bro. Fuck is you talking about? We talking about the OG movies, bro. It's the same thing with like Harry Potter, bro. We, if you watch the Harry Potter movie and then read the books and they remake the Harry Potter movie and add all this random stupid shit, you would be pissed off too. Cause this is not the, this is not the movie that you watched. That shit would be mad annoying, bro. And it's not even a direct, uh, it's not even directly from the books. They be changing shit up. What the fuck was that? Somebody zooming through this bitch. But, but the books, but the books, or it, it, it be old fairy tales or some shit, man. Um, with a guy who literally stalks her. Yeah. <laughs> weird, weird. The weird. cartoon was made 85 years ago, and therefore it's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power. I just mean that it's no longer 1937. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. Even people who are extremely for Disney reshaping and modifying their classics to fit a modern society think Rachel is annoying, entitled- Y'all gotta realize there's so many movies, so many things that are based off books or uh, things. Like they're based off books, but it's not based off the story. It's like based off things that were in the book. Like Jurassic Park, for example was based off a book, but th they're kind of completely different in how it is from the movie, from the book. It's like, the, yeah, it's like the same premise, but they change a lot of shit up because yeah, obviously it's a movie. Studios are so greedy that they don't want to pay writers more for creating new stories with black, Mexican, Asian, LGBT characters, but instead will just pay directors to just edit an already existing classics but the actors supporting it also wrong. The book of Jurassic Park is better, in your opinion? Lol, that's not what I meant. Huh? I was saying that Snow White in the original movie wasn't helpless, so the fact that she keeps going on like she was some helpless chick is wild. It's as if she didn't even watch the movie she's remaking. <laughs> I mean, like... I mean, like, she was asleep, though. Like, she literally needed a nigga to kiss her to, to wake her up, though. Like, wasn't it? Wasn't that the thing? She was asleep, and the only way she could wake up, not it wasn't because like maybe if she thought hard hard enough, or if she believed hard enough, is if a nigga came and kissed her, right? and disrespectful and on top of that she doesn't think she's being paid enough if i'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic disney princess i deserve to be paid i ain't gonna lie she's not wrong for this every hour that it is streamed I don't, I don't see the problem with this i stand i like she want to get paid bro people people deserve to get paid for what they do if you standing four hours a day in a wendy's uniform i deserve every fucking hour uh, of payment that I am I I for, for being in that out uh, for the in that uniform talk your shit I don't like what the fuck she's like everything people hate about this okay, it seems like when people find something that they really dislike about somebody everything they say they just they can't see the sense in it you you're you're just a hater you're just a hater Long don't I that was sleeping beauty it was Bro, who is Snow White, bro? Who is Snow White? I thought she slept in a case or some shit. No, Sleeping Beauty slept in a case, but Snow White had to be kissed awake. Hold on, let me see this shit, bro. I don't fucking know, man. Who the fuck is Snow White? Who is... Who? You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937. And she's not going to be safe with the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. So it's confirmed. Disney is making yet another wokeified remake with Snow White. Let's go through the list of things they've already messed up about this film without it even being out yet. 
First, we have Miss Snow White, who's supposed to be the fairest of them all, being played by a Hispanic woman. And don't get me wrong, Rachel Zegler is wildly talented, but this is a diversity cast if I ever saw it. Oh, and no more Seven Dwarfs, right? Because I'd that's offensive. I'd say Snow White was more so about how women be hating on other women when they up. Now we get, I don't know, these seven magical diver that is true. diversity hires. And you know what? You might be thinking, all of that's fine so long- Yeah, chat. She ate the apple, right? And then she passed out. And the only way she could wake up it was with true love's kiss? Or some shit? As long as they stick to the script, but they can't even manage to do that because- Okay, so she, yeah, she was she was asleep, and she needed she needed a man to fall in love with her, which is hold on, like like to to Ziggler's point, <laughs> she needed a, a a creepy dude to stalk her and fall in love with her, like just watching her sleep, bro. Because girl bosses don't fall in love, and girl bosses are never saved by a man. It's okay to want to be in love. It's okay to fantasize about being saved by a prince. But they want to spin the story to young women that that is somehow wrong. You can leave it to modern Disney to ruin every single timeless classic that they touch. You said uh, it's also like a thing where like women, where people are getting mad because women um, are feminine. Like people are literally getting mad because women are. are like want to be feminine like what huh i'm sorry like some like there's men that don't want to date you know women who act like dudes i'm sorry like is that a problem generation distilled into a single person. There have been rumors that Disney plans on axing this film due to the controversy. If that becomes true, it would forever change the way they cast their lead characters. Which is, I hope, I hope it gets axed. Oh my god, I hope it, I hope, it, I, I, please, please do bad. Please. I've never, like, wished on, on, uh, on a downfall in my life. Like, but this, I, I need this to happen. Because they need to wake up and see, like, yo, we need to, we need to change it. We are not them niggas anymore. We need to figure this out and actually make good shit. God Holy shit. Damn. They need an ego check. She had a man that loved her and that witch was hating, so she poisoned her. <laughs> damn, bro. That sounds like a bitch in the shade room comments. If they don't ax the film, it sends the message to future leads that you can disrespect the legacy of Disney, insert your unwanted opinions, all while elevating your fame and getting paid millions of dollars. Marvel has not been able to escape this downfall either. Aside from Spider-Man and Black Panther, who were certified billion dollar hits, their rollout of new films have been catastrophic. The New Mutants, The Kingsman, Morbius, Return- Wait, what? Their rollout of new films have been catastrophic. The new- Wasn't this supposed to be like a horror? That shit fucking flippity flopped. God damn. Mutants, the king. Oh, uh, I this this. I liked. I like this though, like it was cool. It wasn't like you know, it wasn't like the how to like the Kingsman type shit type shit, but it was it was cool, bro. Kingsman, Morbius. I didn't see this. Eternals. I saw this and was bored. Which was their first openly gay superhero. All Wait, who? Wait, what? Bombed at the box office. This is a special. Who was gay? <gasps> the black dude. Oh, the black dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's almost as if it's almost as if I wasn't consumed by it. Oh my god. It's almost as if I sat there and watched the movie and wasn't consumed by the gayness. Holy shit. I forgot that the black dude was gay. How can like dog it who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Oh my god. Especially bad when you consider these movies have two hundred million dollar budgets. Damn! Their new TV series, She. Oh my God! This piece of fucking trash. I've seen so many clips on this. I just do not ever, ever want to like. I don't even need to see it. I don't even want to start an episode. Like Jesus Christ! What the fuck are they doing? Hulk, WandaVision, Miss Marvel. WandaVision was cool. That was like literally at the end of the peak of of like what Marvel was doing. So I was on that shit. I was watching it. It was actually really good. Uh, but then that was like the last show. Loki, I watched Loki too. And then those were like the last shows where I was like, you know what? I think I'm, I think I'm feeling fatigue, bro. I think it's just too much at this right now. And Secret Invasion are not drawing much excitement from fans either. No. And rumors are circulating that some of these TV episodes are costing upwards of $25 million to make. In an effort to cut costs, they aren't shrinking budgets and writing better stories. They're just laying off hardworking people. 
Bob Iger announced Ew! his plan to reduce costs by $5.5 billion, which included reducing the workforce by 7,000 employees. One of these employees was Marvel executive Ike Perlmutter, who was the man who sold Marvel to Disney 15 years ago. Disney has bought extremely valuable IP from culture. Yeah, like, well, like, what can we do? Chat. We're gonna bo we're gonna boycott uh we're gonna boycott Disney. Uh yeah. So I'm not watching any sports. I can't watch teddy bears or uh, climb trees or anything like that. I can't watch no Star Wars, huh? I can't I can't learn the history and shit like that, huh? What? What? I basically can't watch no da no goddamn movies. I can't watch TV. Saw this skit about the Snow White kiss being non-consensual. If you wanna oh, check it out. God. Bro, I feel like the main thing, like what we what we need to stick it to Disney is these fucking shitty movies. Is by people just not going to see their damn movies. Long now but it's not gonna happen. Hero black and gay, they were preying on his downfall. They set brop. The middle America white saint watching Juicy Smollett save niggers in theaters. God damn! Don't I let me sum it up for you when the queen. Which was jealous of her beauty, she fed her a cursed apple. Okay. The curse was for her to only be revived by true love, because if you remember, her stepmom killed all her stepchildren. So she had no love. God damn! Don't I, I think you are a bit underrating the influence of these agendas in movies. As kids, we were actually influenced a lot and copied characters we liked in cartoons and films. Of course, now when we see it, we don't give a fuck. No, no, you're right. You're right. But it wasn't, it, it's not even really main characters. These be random side characters that be like gay. They have like literally the most minute clips in the, in the, um, in the movie. Literally. Even when I was younger, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm trying to think. I don't, I can't even remember, but I watched a lot of, I like, like watched a lot of movies. When I was younger, a lot of movies I wasn't even supposed to be watching when I was younger, but um, I remember uh, I can't even remember a movie where there would probably be a character like that or a scene because I just they don't stick in my brain. But it's different if it was like the main character or some shit like that. Like you're gonna see that the whole fucking it's basically the whole movie. But a lot of these scenes that I'm seeing or that I've seen in recent movies, they've been little. They've been. Like side characters, like clips. I get what you're saying, though. Trust me. I get what you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. Like, if uh, if Spider-Man was going around dicking down, like, dudes, like, I'm pretty sure as a kid, like, you're going to be like, what? I got to find some ass from a dude. Because I want to be like Spider-Man. And you wouldn't even be thinking about it like, gay you just be like i want to be spider-man that's what spider-man does bro like chat no 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 listen listen imagine spider-man upside down kissed a dude you're gonna be thinking about upside down kissing a dude because spider-man did it that's kind of fire what bro y'all not listening bro bro y'all not listening bro I will not hear you out. I'm saying I get what the guy's saying. Cause as kids, you're you are easily you are influenced by what you see, bro. Uh but a lot of the gay characters have been like side characters and shit. Truly significant studios rinsed every dollar they could out of them and reshaped the narratives to tell a more modern and socially acceptable story. But they are now in panic mode. When it's I not saw Rent working as a kid, anymore. I had no idea it was about gay niggas passing around HIV until I watched Older. Rent? God damn! But Spider Man is getting dicked down. Tom Holland was getting his back blown out by Iron Man. Tom Holland was getting his back blown out, but it wasn't by Iron Man. God damn! Let's revise this together, don't I? Her stepmom, the Queen, had all her stepchildren killed. Snow White escaped and the Queen found out, so she became a witch, fed her a cursed apple. Because she had no love from anyone, which thought she was dead. Why is she on her dick so much, first of all? Second of all, 
Anybody who loved her, could've, like her sisters, could have kissed her and she could have came back alive? More. They have lost $900 million in their last eight releases, and just a week ago, their stock price hit a nine-year low when it fell below $84 in 2020. Isn't that a different type of love, though? Yeah, I know they. I know her sisters died, but I'm saying like her sisters could have woke her up. Ain't that a different type of love? Cause it's like, God, what if a dog lick her? Oh shit, that was Toby. Tom was getting blacked. Yeah. Yeah. Tom was getting blacked. Toby was getting. Toby was fucking Iron Man. Twenty three. So if go chat, if y'all don't know what we're talking about, it was like this scene. It was like some movie. I forgot. I forgot what it was, but it literally had all the the fucking. <laughs> all the fucking superheroes in it before they were superheroes going woke is clearly pissing off fans and dragging their financials into the mud why are they doing it is it because they genuinely care about inclusion and making people of all kinds feel comfortable and happy well when you learn about the corporate equality index you might think differently as to why companies are all of a sudden being so forward with their political ideologies for the 16th year in a row disney received a score of 100 on the human rights campaign foundation's corporate equality index the cei score is administered by the human rights campaign the largest LGBTQ political lobbying organization in the US. This score is given to companies that meet certain criteria such as workforce protections, inclusive benefits. Oh my god, chat. Literally this literally Disney the like the mermaid being black is getting hired at a job at a at a job just because you're black. And not because your skills or your background supporting an inclusive culture, and the big one being corporate social responsibility. CSR is the one we will notice the most because of the rules that must be followed to earn a full score in this area. Marketing or advertising in LGBTQ consumers. Advertising with LGBTQ plus content. Advertising in LGBTQ media or sponsoring LGBTQ organizations and events. And demonstrated public support for LGBTQ plus equality under the law through local, state, and federal legislation or or initiatives. Companies are rewarded with essentially a social credit score based on how inclusive they are. Investors often consider a company's CEI score as an indicator of potential what? future backlash over human rights violations or other People controversies. People just how much cross-dressing was in old movies when we were growing up. Stop bitching. Someone said, Hallie is talented. Who says she wasn't? <laughs> Who says she wasn't, man? Holy shit. Put your pussy back in your pocketbook, man. Relax. <laughs> Nobody's coming at her, bro. I think you're missing the argument. A high CEI score can reassure investors that the company is a relatively safe bet. If you do not comply with the HRC's guidelines and receive a low CEI score, then investment firms that control trillions of dollars, such as BlackRock, will actively avoid investing in your company. This why would they, why would them, including LGBTQ or like, any of that, what does that have to do with anything for them to want to invest? Situation becomes particularly concerning when viewed through the lens of potential blackmail. Oh my God, they broke it down into percentages. If a company fails to meet HRC's criteria, the HRC can exert pressure on investors. These investors, in turn, can influence the company's board, creating a chain of external pressures. If they learn that a company is not complying with the HRC's LGBTQ criteria, they have the power to contact advertising agencies and encourage them to no longer do business with these companies. This could result in a significant loss of income for a non-compliant company. Adding another layer of complexity, companies that do adhere to the CEI criteria may also be penalized if they engage in business with companies that do not. In some cases, even the companies that are making an effort to meet the CEI standards could see their scores negatively affected. Very powerful billionaires are very much against conservative values. Strong family bonds, frugality, and modesty contradict the consumerist mindset. By influencing a younger generation to distance themselves from these traditional values, these cutthroat businessmen aim to shape a future consumer base that generates more profits than ever before. However, not every company is successful in trying to achieve a higher score. For instance, companies like Bud Light have faced controversies that led to significant financial losses. The biggest problem with this score is that you'll never know the difference between an actually progressive inclusive company and one that's just trying to get a higher score to look good for investors. You have to ask yourself, is Disney trying to make your life easier, safer, and happier? Or are they just trying to prevent investors from getting scared and pulling out?
The truth is, I mean, at the rate that they're going, I'm pretty sure they don't want investors to pull out. Disney has always faced backlash, and they always will. You can type in literally any Disney film, the word controversy after it, and you will find an article of someone pinpointing a small detail accusing them of being racist, whitewashing, too gay, not gay enough. There will always be someone angry. After dragging three iconic studios into the dirt and squeezing out every last penny they can, it seems like the one thing they haven't tried in two decades is use their endless amount of dollars and connections to build a super team and write a good story oh my gosh this what this was an hour and 33 minutes recording i mean i don't gotta lie i'm not gonna lie we did we uh, we talked about a lot <laughs> there was a lot going on there's a lot of back and forth uh a lot of uh you know back and forth between between us uh in the chat um o God, overall overall i think um I think, bro, I just want, I, all I want is a good story that doesn't feel like a message is being forced, of, is being forced on me. Like, I want to sit there and watch something that doesn't make me think of, like, the news. <laughs> I don't want to go to a movie and think of the news or think of Twitter or, or like, I just want to watch, I want to go on a good, cool-ass adventure, bro. Play play a game and, 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 uh, and, like, have a good time at the story and shit like that. And I feel like I'm reading an advert out of a fucking magazine or article or something like holy shit man holy shit but hopefully they figure their shit out because it looks like shit's going south 